the sun comes up it's a new day dawning it's time to sing your song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Well, good morning, Wilshire. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. Uh, my name's Rob. I'm one of the pastors here. And we will continue to praise God. There are 10,000 reasons to praise Him. Although it can be very difficult in this time. And so today we will talk about how do you praise God even in the midst of a storm. So we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll discuss more. I, I want you to know that I continue to pray for you. Uh, reach out to us if you need anything. As a community, we continue to have our food bank open and, and reach people in the city. But we also want to pray because we know that we have the great healer, the great physician. And so uh, I invite you to join us at 212. Wilshire, our, our physical address is 212 East Wilshire Avenue. But at 212 every day, although we cannot meet physically here, we want to be together as a community praying. So you can pray for those impacted by the virus. You can pray for uh, researchers, uh, first responders, pray for health of our community, for the world, for churches all over. And so would you continue to pray as you feel led? Join us every day. 2 12 p.m and we'll pray and and just cry out to god so i invite you to sing with me go ahead feel free to get off the couch stand uh, sit kneel whatever you feel comfortable i encourage you in this time to maybe turn off some notifications if the only one maybe join us in some chat and uh, either shouting an amen or something god's speaking to you uh, share that with us share it with the community encourage one another so let's sing let's worship god thanks for joining us in love and you're slow to anger your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness I will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find sing bless the Lord the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. And all that day when my strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forevermore forevermore Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name, I will worship Your holy name. Worship your holy name. Amen. Would you pray with me? Father God, we are here because you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be worshipped, God. 
God, for who you are and what you've done. We just want to take time out of our lives, out of our schedules, um, to worship you as a, as a church community. Although that we are separate um, in separate places, God, we can worship you together. So God, we ask you to receive um, this worship. We pray that it blesses your name. We love you and pray all this in your son's name. Amen. Hear these words from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall, God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. 
The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Let's sing this song together. There is a light It burns brighter than the sun He steals the night And casts no shadow There is hope should oceans rise and mountains fall, he never fails. So take heart, let his love lead us through the night. Hold on to hope. Take courage again In death by love The fallen world was overcome He wears the scars Of our freedom In His name All our fears just swept away he never fails sing so take heart so take heart let his love lead us through the night hold on to hope and take a
For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of His will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Now let's hear from Pastor Rob. Well, hey, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, my name's Rob. I'm one of the pastors, and uh, we know that this is a difficult season, and so we continue to pray for you. Uh, I feel now more than ever that we need to look at and ask the question, one of the most important questions, and it's this question right here. It's who is Jesus? You see, we're looking at the life of Jesus, and if you're just tuning in this week, you can jump right in. I encourage you to go back and listen to other sermons, but this sermon will stand alone, and so you're good. But we're asking this question, and we're looking at the eyewitness account of Jesus. It's through his disciple John, who saw the crucifixion, who saw the resurrection, who sat down and ate dinner with Jesus. And he tells us at the end of his gospel, the end of this account of his life, and he gives us this verse here. He says, but these are written, all of these miracles, all of these signs are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name, eternal life, life forever and life here now, even in the midst of a pandemic that you and I might experience life. You see, it's presented to us in John chapter 6. I invite you uh, to open along, open up your Bibles. You can follow along on your apps. And uh, we're going to look at this story, this account of Jesus' life. Now, you see, Jesus and his disciples, they had crossed uh, the Sea of Galilee. And they're there in the region, and they're up on the hillside. And then off as they look, there's a crowd coming for them. You see, Jesus had been performing signs. He had turned water into wine. He had done uh, just these other signs that people are starting to hear about Jesus, and so they come. And then as the crowds are coming towards Jesus looking for something, Jesus then tells his disciples, and he asks them uh, this. He says, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test them, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Now you see, the people are coming, they're hungry, looking for answers, and Jesus is asking the disciples what to do. What to do when the crowds are coming. And you see in this day and age, this was a group that was living in poverty. This was a very poor area. And also that we see that the the Jews of the day and age, we can't forget that as we're reading these gospels, they're living under the Roman Empire. The oppressive Roman Empire, this is their own land, and they, the empire has occupied their land, and so they're being heavily taxed, and you just, attention is, is high, and so there's difficulty in, in this day and age. But what we see is here, they're coming, they're hungry, they're looking for something more. And so the, the next verse, looking at it, uh, so how the disciples respond. Another of his disciples, Andrew Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. He, he said, he brought uh, a boy that had five barley loaves, small barley loaves. Now you see, barley, the barley loaves were a sign that this, this, this boy was living in poverty. Barley was the bread of the poor. And so he had five barley loaves and two small fish But how far will they go among so many? You see, the disciples had three, we'll look at three just different interactions from them. Philip, who was from the region, and Jesus asked him this, he sees only the physical, and his response is that it would take more than a half a year's wages. He looks at what's present, and he says, there's no way we can feed. He knows the area, and he says, there's no way we can feed that many. Secondly, the disciples we know from Mark chapter 6 that they feel overwhelmed and they defer responsibility. You know, study after study is showing that, especially in this day and age, when we're looking at news and and the pandemic and there's so much going on, 
that we become overwhelmed. And what studies show, because we know so much that we actually help less. You see, the disciples, they saw such a great need that they deferred responsibility. They said to Jesus just to send the crowd away and let them eat on their own. You see, yet Jesus is not satisfied with that answer. We also see a third one, Andrew. He's the brother of Peter, Jesus' right-hand man. And he essentially asks, what is the point? How far? Here's a boy, and you have to imagine, he's kind of laughing about this and saying, hey, look, here's a boy with five loaves and two fish. How far is that going to go? And then Jesus says, well, let me see what the boy has. And so he takes it. He takes the bread. He gives thanks to the Father. And right before he does this, this is a key fact that we'll look at in a moment. He has the crowds He tells the disciples to have the crowds sit down. And so they sit and he breaks the bread. He gives thanks to the Father. And then he begins to feed the crowds. Because as it goes on, this account is told in all four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's told about how Jesus broke the bread and fed over 5,000. That it was multitudes. uh, This was just the head of the household that was counted. And so there was probably... Over 10,000 with women, children, kids. And so they're there and Jesus feeds them. And then afterwards, it's not just a small amount that maybe some have thought, well, maybe each person got a little bit and they were just practicing spirituality and they were content with a little. Yet the account goes and describes that afterwards there were baskets and baskets full of bread. See, what you need to know in this day and age when it can seem like the, our whole world has turned upside down, you need to know that God provides for our physical needs. You see, he still meets us in our needs and he had compassion on the people. It, you see, it's our first point that Jesus sustains and provides. He meets us in our physical needs and he sustains us and provides us. Jesus taught us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Give us provision. Maybe some of you uh, are out of work in this season. The prayer is that God would continue to provide. You see, uh, several years ago, years and years ago doing youth ministry, that uh, one thing, I, I was a coach at a local high school in football. And so afterwards, my wife and I, we would open up our apartment, just bring all the football boys in, pack them into our tiny one-bedroom apartment, big old football boys. We would open up God's Word and study. But before we did that, we stumbled upon something, and my wife said, we got to feed them. And so she went into the cupboard and cracked some pasta, pulled out a jar of pasta, put that over, had some lettuce, broke that up, and then put some salad on it, or some salad dressing, called it a salad. And so that was it. That's what we had, our meal, and we're serving it to him. And I remember specifically, there was one boy that looked up and he said, I wish my mother would cook like this for me. And I remember looking over to my wife and saying, we can't ever not feed them. We have to, every time we gather, we have to give them spiritual food. We're gonna open up God's word and feed them and we're gonna give them physical food. You see, that's what Jesus does. He cares about your spiritual needs and cares about your physical needs. So in this time when you're hurting or maybe have friends or family that are sick, may you look to God who sustains and provides. And that's what Jesus shows in our brokenness and our concern. He has compassion on his children. So may you know that Jesus has compassion on you. So then as the story's going on, after Jesus feeds them, feeds the 5,000, he begins to go off and they follow him. And then they tell him, Jesus says this to them in verse 26. He says, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. You see, you weren't interested in the miraculous and the things that the signs that Jesus was doing these things. He often performed these signs to to speak about a a greater reality. And we'll get to that more in a moment. But he's saying, you just came because your bellies were full. So as it goes on, let's see verse 27. Jesus tells them, do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life. Which the Son of Man will give you. 
They go on to say, well, give us this bread. What is this? How do we, how do we work for this food? You know, because they're used to, you work, you get paid, and then you get fed. But Jesus gives this interesting response here. He answers, the work of God is this. You want to know what the work is? And he says, to believe in the one who he has sent. The work is to believe. You see, that's why Jesus had the crowd sit down. Because this is a demonstration of grace. It's not about working. They weren't in the right mind or doing everything in order to receive the blessing. The blessing was received by sitting. Grace comes, God's grace, his provision and grace towards you comes simply by believing. It isn't, as the scriptures say, it's by faith, not by works that we come to receive Jesus. And so that is what Jesus is saying. But what's so interesting He's telling them, you don't work for this. This is something that's given. And then they turn the whole conversation sideways. And they ask him for this. And as they're looking and saying, he's saying, all you need to do is believe. And then they bring up Moses. They say, well, our ancestors who were in slavery. And when Moses and Aaron delivered God's people out of Egypt, they were in slavery in Egypt under Pharaoh's rule. And so from there, they were rescued out by God. Uh, He parted the Red Sea and they walked through it. And then God provided bread for them in the wilderness. That's what they're referring to. They said, God did this through Moses. So what kind of tricks do you have? Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. Now you see, bread is very symbolic for the Jews. Because when the Jews were rescued out of Egypt, what we see is that God provided for them. Now as the Jews were rescued out of Egypt, I feel like there's a word for us. Because they were once in slavery, Pharaoh had put such heavy restrictions on them. Life was difficult, they were complaining. And then God uses Moses to deliver them. And and so they're going through this, and and then God pulls them out, and then, here's, looking in Exodus 16, Exodus in the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, the Exodus is when they exited Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. You see, at the time, things were great. Yes, we're out of slavery But then when things don't go their way, they began to grumble against their leaders. You see, God was still delivering them. God has a journey for his people. And yet his people got, they focused on the circumstances. And they were so worried about the circumstances that they lost sight of everything else. And in fact, it got so bad that they complained. The Israelites said to them, to Aaron and Moses, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around. There back in slavery, we sat around with pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into the desert to starve this entire assembly to death. You see, they were looking back. They would rather go back to slavery where they could have meat. You see, sometimes in our problems, we only go back to what's familiar. They, they didn't know, they didn't even remember how bad they had it. They just wanted their bellies to be full. And so what goes on is then the Lord responds to Moses and he says, I will rain down bread from heaven. For you, he says, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. You see, it goes on to say that each one can grab as much as they need. And that's the story of God. God blesses us. He gives us all that we need. Sometimes we might think that we want more, but God gives us what we need. You see, then what God told them, for five days you will collect this manna that is to appear, this bread that appears in the morning. You're not to store it up. Just take enough for each day so that you will rely on me. On the sixth day, gather two portions. So then on the seventh day, the Sabbath, the day of rest, you're not collecting. So you're resting in God and resting in his provision. 
You see, if, if they had held on from one day to the next other than the sixth day, that the bread would become moldy. They were not to store up for the next day. And so, at the beginning, as they're seeing this bread that's on the ground, there's this interesting interaction uh, among the Israelites. And they're there, and they look at this thing that God had provided. And their first words are, they, they describe it as called manna, which in Hebrew sounds like, what is it? You see, they were in slavery, and now they're here and they don't understand the provision that's right in front of them. And I wonder if that's a word for us. You see, our lives, our schedules before the coronavirus, and don't get this twisted. I'm not saying God causes the coronavirus. But what I do know is that God can work through it and through difficult things. In this season... When we're looking at our schedules, and sometimes I'm wondering where we want to go back to our lives. When I remember there were days where, where people, we would talk and just say, I'm so, so busy. I, I, you know, I don't even have enough time to think. And, and studies are showing that we're busier than ever and more depressed than ever. And yet, we want to often go back to what's familiar you see, the Jews were going back to the past. They wanted to be back in slavery just so their bellies were full. You see, God always has a plan for his people, a better future. Now, what we can't miss is being resting in the present. Because as we rest in the present, it's our second point that Jesus invites us. He invites us to enter into his presence. You see, what Jesus comes later on to say, he says, I am the bread of life. If anyone would feed on me, he says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. So as he's saying this, he's saying every day, Jesus taught us to pray for our daily bread. It's physical provision, but God also promises us himself. You see, what we can miss, if we're only looking at the past, we'll look, oh, but we had meat. Wasn't that so great, but we were in slavery and we can miss the manna. What is it? Because you see, when you're in the midst of it and something new happens, you might not realize the blessing that it's there. What is it? I don't know. It's a new blessing. So how is God blessing you in this season? I'm not saying this season's great. Because there's voices that are out there and saying, well, just use this time to refine yourself and everything will be okay. And just look towards the future. You see, there's a problem with that. Because as they were there, if they would only look to the promised land, they were pulled from slavery, they were in the wilderness, and then promised, eventually 40 years later, they enter into the promised land, where it's a land overflowing with milk and honey. So good days are coming. You see, and that's what we all long for. We ask, and where is God in the pandemic? We're looking, we're longing for the promised land. You see, there's still a day and age we are longing for heaven where there are no more tears, pain, or suffering. But if we only look to the future, we can miss God's provision in the presence. We miss what God is doing. The what is it? What is he doing in your midst? How can you slow down and realize that God is actually providing physical food and spiritual food? Don't miss it by looking back to the past and longing for it or only living in the future when things get better. God is doing something now in your life. And would you rest in it? It's okay to say what is it, but would you seek him and explore and ask what is it and allow God to reveal himself to you in this time because he does want to provide. And his greatest provision is his presence. And we get to enter in to his presence. I am the bread of life. Now you see, as they're there in the conversation, he's proclaiming he's the bread of life. And if anyone comes to me and eats of this bread, they will never grow hungry again. But then Jesus also begins to hint at his sacrifice. He, he invites them not just to fill up physically and spiritually, but he's saying, if you're actually going to follow me, there's a part of dying because Jesus proclaimed all before, his, uh, before the crucifixion and resurrection, he proclaimed what he was going to do. And so he talks about his body because you see, for the Jews, 
bread was so significant. And in fact, in the tabernacle, there was a thing called the bread of presence. It, you see that it's in uh, Exodus, and we, you see that in Leviticus as well, that it's described at, um, in uh, Exodus 25 and Leviticus 24. It, you see that there's description, the bread of presence, and, and there was 12 loaves. It's so interesting, as Jesus broke bread with his 12 disciples, you see on this wood table, this acacia wood table in the tabernacle where only the priest would break the bread. But Jesus comes and he offers bread. And in fact, when he gave thanks to the Father and he broke bread, he broke it so that others would live. You see, that's what Jesus invited people into. His body would be broken right before he had dinner with the 12 disciples and he's there and he breaks the bread he tells that his body will be broken that his blood would be shed for the forgiveness of sins and you see this is the call he invites us to because you see Jesus willingly went to the cross he went to the by the father's will but he also willingly goes and to the cross his body is broken so that others would live like the miracle, the sign of feeding the 5,000, this is a sign that his body would be broken and thousands, the whole world would be fed because of his brokenness. Now what I don't want you to miss in this season is during a time of brokenness, and again, God doesn't cause this brokenness, but in a time when we're in the wilderness and saying, what is it? You see that what we can see is that there is still blessing in the brokenness. Because if we're only looking to the future, like we said, that we'll miss God's provision in the present. You see, sometimes we can live life this way. Think about high school students. I remember when you think about when you're graduating, this is, oh, it's so good to graduate, and it is. Not trying to be the pessimistic people that are just, you know, rain down on the parade. It's so fun to graduate. But then think about all of the nights, in your, what is your stress in high school? It's staying up late, working on uh, studying for tests, and then you go off and you graduate to college where the tests get harder, and so it's, you're there and it's just the next thing. Then you go off, you're studying late, pulling all-nighters, writing papers in college, and then you go off and get a job. And then your worries and your stress in that time is providing, making rent, and doing these things. And then as you graduate and, and you're uh, getting further along in a job and maybe even in management, now what you're worrying about is not just making and providing for yourself, you're worrying about providing for others. You see, if you're always looking to the next best thing, there will always be problems. You see, there's always stress and worry, but what Jesus comes to say, there is always going to be brokenness if your life is only worried and consumed, if you're only filling to have your stomachs full, Jesus says you're looking at the source. You're looking, excuse me, at the resource and not the source. See, that's what this crowd was looking for. They just wanted their bodies, their stomachs to be full. And what Jesus is saying, don't look at the resource, but look at the source, the bread of life that will sustain you and fulfill you. It's as if they were keep checking their banks, looking for their stimulus checks. And yet, they weren't thinking about the one who meticulously checks in on his children and cares for them and provides for them. You see, what you and I can miss if we're focused on the brokenness, we miss the blessing. If Jesus, when his body was broken on the cross and he said, this is it, if this is all, if this is what the Father's love is for me, and he based it on his circumstances, that would be the end. And yet, it was in his brokenness that there was blessing. Friends, in times like this, this brings us what Jesus does. God brings blessing even in the midst of brokenness. I'm hearing stories of it. Uh, of you, church, are loving people. You're, you're sacrificing. You're, you're shopping for others, going around and, and caring for them, meeting their needs, volunteering at our food bank, praying for our city. 
There are so many of those that continue to work so that others would live, or first responders in hospitals and, and working. And I mean, give it up for our people in the grocery stores, clerks, that so many of them are getting sick in this time so that others would live. You see, this is what Jesus invites us to. He says, if you want to experience the bread of life, you come after me. You have to experience it. It's not optional. There will be brokenness. Because Jesus said, my body is broken for you. Because when it was broken, others were fed. Don't run from the brokenness, but look for the blessing in the midst. Because the wilderness is not the end of the story. Friends, the pandemic is not the end of the story. But God's blessing and provision is available even in this time. So may you know that God is with you in this time. Because Jesus promised whoever comes to me in John 6, he says, I will never turn them away. I will keep them with me. So if you come to him, he won't turn you away. Yet there were many that ended up walking away because they said, I want nothing to do with this sacrifice. Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, are you too going to leave? And Peter says this line. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Where else are we going to go? We can't fill our lives and just the stimulus checks aren't the solutions. They're great. But these aren't going to provide you, Jesus, alone have the words of eternal life. Jesus will meet your physical needs, pray for each other, help each other. Hearing stories of people helping out with rent and blessing, keep that up, church. But may we also know in this that Jesus offers eternal life. He takes care of the physical and he takes care of the spiritual. Where else are we going to go? It's, our hope is not in the economy. Our hope is not in our health. Our hope is in the one that would give eternal life. And that believing in him that he is the holy one. In a moment, I'm going to invite you to pray. Because maybe there are some of you in this season. Maybe it's loneliness. And I'm going to pray that God would just draw close in his presence. Maybe some of you are sick and are hurting, and, and ask, I'm asking that God would nourish your bodies. Maybe for some of us, we're just wondering when it, this will all end, and when will it all go away. I'm asking that God would comfort you. He would provide for you, and that you would know in his hands there might be brokenness, but there's blessing, there's manna, even in the wilderness, there's his presence. So may you slow down in this season, May you enter into his presence knowing that the Father has you, Jesus has you in his hands, that he's caring for you, he's nurturing you and providing for you. You might be like Philip and, and, and the other disciples. How, how can we find any blessing? It's okay. Jesus still brings the blessing, the miracle of feeding the 5,000. And so would you, whatever you're at, your brokenness, would you take your brokenness and put it in the hands of Jesus? Because when you put your brokenness, when I put my brokenness in the hands of Jesus, that's when the breaking begins to happen and that's when the miracle happens. So let's see what God does, even with our brokenness or weakness, all of the incredible things that God will do through you and through me. I invite you to pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your son. We thank you, um, Lord, just for life, that you came. You are the bread of life. As Peter said, where else shall we go? To whom else can we go to? Who else can we turn to but to you? Father, I pray for my friends listening now, that you would comfort them, that you would nourish them both physically and spiritually. Jesus, we're, we are hurting in this time, and I thank you that you are not unfamiliar with our pain and our sorrow right now. And yet you promise, God, that any of us, if we are looking for and longing for more, you would never turn us away. I, I invite you in this time to pray with me now. If you are looking, if you're hungry, because we're all hungry for something more. And Jesus says, if you 
eat the bread of life, you will never be hungry again. So would you pray this with me? If that's where you're at, hungry for something more, would you pray with me? Father, Jesus, I want to receive you, the bread of life, that you are life. You are the Holy One, Jesus. You are the Son of God. I believe that you died and you rose again. You conquered the brokenness. You put the end to all brokenness and brought healing and restoration. And Father, that's what we look to and what we long for. And so our hearts, we don't have all the answers and we might not even know exactly how to pray, but we sit down right now like the crowd did. And God, we want to receive this bread, not just the bread that fills our stomachs, but the bread that lasts forever, you. God, we receive you. I receive you. I love you and praise you and pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, if that's you and you're hungry for something more, would you make a comment or email office at wilshireav.com and we'd love to have one of the pastors reach out to you. As Jesus says, this is where you experience life. Because I love what he says here that his first of the seven I am statements is I am the bread of life. And so as we continue to sing and worship, I invite you not to go anywhere just yet because we're going to hear a final song and then I'm gonna wrap up and give you one more final thought on this bread of life. But as, as we gather, I, I wanna thank you church just for your generosity during this season. Uh, we continue to, at our mission at Wilshire Avenue is to meet physical needs and spiritual needs. We continue to keep the food bank open and so many of you are bringing hope and healing and physical and uh, just bringing necessities. So church, keep that up. Would you also in this season, uh, for followers of Jesus, would you consider helping the mission? If you're new to this whole thing in church and faith, please just let the film keep rolling. Uh, I encourage you though, as followers of Jesus, this is a time more now than ever during this wilderness where God calls us to be generous so that others would live, to enter into this brokenness, this pain that we enter into, sometimes sacrificing hurts, but we do it so others might live. And church, I, I wanna thank you for your generosity, for your love for others, so others would get physical nourishment, nourishment and, and spiritual nourishment. We will continue to proclaim the good news about Jesus, the bread of life. So let's continue to sing and worship him. You can give in the links down below or, or give on wilshireav.com backslash give. And uh, we'll post up the link here. And so continue to, to worship God through your giving. And we'll sing the song and give the final thought. Oh, I'm not here for passing 
Thanks again for joining us. You see, it's no small thing that the first of seven statements, I am, where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. You see, when the Israelites were in captivity and Moses is asking, how do I let my people go? And he's going to Pharaoh and asking these things. But before he asks God, who should I say sent them? And God tells them, I am am. Tell them I am sent you. And so when Jesus is referring to this, when he's saying I am the bread of life, he's referring to himself as God. You see, the God who always has been, the God who is present and with us, and the God who always will be. Friends, this is what we need to teach our children the next generation. Although the pandemic and and this world, we might be in the wilderness But God has always been there. He is with us now and he will be with us in the future. We might be broken, but when we put our bread, our lives into his hands, that's when the blessing really takes place. That's, although we might feel broken, there's God's going to do an incredible work as we bless others and he's doing something even in the midst of such pain and sorrow. So may you know that God is And the promise is that Jesus says, everyone that comes to me, that believes in him, will have eternal life and that he will raise them up on the last day. Whoever eats the bread of life will live. So as you go, may you know that Jesus will never turn you away. May you know that he nourishes your body. We pray for hope and for healing over your body and hope for your soul. May you trust that in Jesus is life, life eternal and life now. May you know that he's with you 
He knows your pain and sorrow as he suffered in this world. May you lean into him. May he bless you and keep you and shine his face upon you. We can't wait to see you next week and even through some of the videos throughout the week. God bless you. I love you. We'll see you soon. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children.